Good afternoon and thank you for joining us. I'm Jacqueline Matter. And I'm Scott Dennis. Welcome to our expanded coverage of Hurricane Irma's aftermath. Suncoast View will return tomorrow. Our top story, days after Irma swept through the Suncoast, power outages continue to plague the area. Taking a look at the latest outage numbers from Florida Power and Light, Sarasota County still has over 65,000 outages, while Manatee County reports more than 40,000. But we want to assure you that crews are working around the clock to get that power back online. Meanwhile, President Trump has made a trip to Florida today, getting a first-hand look at the devastation that Hurricane Irma left behind. Days after the storm, recovery is still in full swing, while millions of people still are without power. ABC 7's Jess Dowdrick has more. President Trump, Vice President Mike Pence, and the First Lady all landing here at Private Sky Aviation, part of Southwest Florida International Airport in Fort Myers. The administration meeting with those directly impacted by Hurricane Irma in the middle of recovery efforts. The Trump administration was met by Governor Rick Scott when they stepped off the plane. Scott, the Coast Guard, and FEMA briefing the president on recovery efforts. The team then taking helicopters to Naples, an area that saw some of the worst devastation that Hurricane Irma left behind. President Trump has promised federal funding to help aid local communities and the state in response and recovery after Hurricane Irma through the Florida Disaster Declaration. Part of that money will go to Naples and Fort Myers communities, along with a total of 37 counties across the state, including Sarasota, Manatee, Charlotte, and DeSoto counties. This was a quick trip for the Trump administration. President Trump, the First Lady, and Vice President Mike Pence all back at the White House tonight. Reporting in Fort Myers, Jess Dowdrick, ABC7, your Suncoast News. All right, Jess, thank you so much. Well, it was, uh, you know, I felt like the temperature and the humidity went up a little bit today. And Certainly. Felt so bad for everyone still without power. Yes, and on top of that, lots of people out there in the sun picking up all of that debris yeah, in their yards as a well. A ton of it. All right, let's get the latest now on our weather with Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. Bob? Yeah, I was still picking mine up and putting some pieces to back together of the fence. Uh, it is hot out there, 87 degrees. You'll notice that high humidity is back with us right now. We have plenty of sunshine, and there it is, the heat index at 101. So we've gone back up past 100 now, and the dew point way up there at 79. Winds are to the southwest at 7. The pressure has been wholly steady right around 29.93 inches. Flood warnings remain in effect for the Peace River. Horse Creek, the Mayaka River at the Mayaka State Park, but the Manatee River at the Mayaka Head has since uh, expired now. There's not a lot of rain to cool us down. There are a few showers up near Ruskin. Those are pushing to the northeast away from us. A lot of rain off in the Gulf, but nothing going on as far as any kind of development goes there. So it will count for just a 20% chance for an isolated shower through this evening. Temperatures remaining warm. We could use a little bit of rain to cool things down for the overnight for the folks without electricity, uh, which uh, apparently uh, numbers over 100,000 uh, here along the uh, Sun Coast. Uh, and it, right now, that heavy rainfall near Ruskin, the outflow from here may create some showers and storms here. Uh, again, in Manatee County, as a result of the outflow, we are seeing a few showers near Palmetto, but not enough to cool us down at this point. Heat indices, the highest right here at 101 in Sarasota. And you can see uh, we have some numbers generally around 100 degrees. Cortez a little bit cooler, closer to the water. 105, though, it feels like in Mayaka City. Well, more on the weather coming up in a few minutes. Back to you. All right. Thank you, Bob. Some people are still evacuated from their homes due to Hurricane Irma and are now relying on FEMA to foot the bill for hotel stays. Janelle Ford joins us now live from the Capri at Siesta in Sarasota with more. Janelle? Yeah, this is one of only three hotels here in Manatee and Sarasota counties that are participating in the FEMA program. And with thousands of people still displaced following Hurricane Irma, you can only imagine the rush to snag a room at one of these hotels. Now, right now, this hotel is filled to capacity. The small boutique only has 10 rooms. The hotels, the other hotels are also experiencing the same thing. Now, when I called Homewood Suites in Sarasota, Soda, they told me they were sold out and Anna Marie Island in has gotten so many calls that you can't even get through to their line. Now they've had to set up a post Irma coast custom voicemail and they say they've been having an influx of 300 plus calls per hour. Now the hotel manager here tells me it's been pretty crazy. FEMA reached out to us um, and of course we were really interested in participating in the program and once we did get power back and we signed up for it then the phone basically started ringing off the hook and we sold out within about an hour and have unfortunately been having to turn away people a lot today. 
Now here at the Capri at Siesta, they also have a wedding booked this weekend. So unfortunately, the guests that are staying here right now are going to have to pack up their belongings and find somewhere else to stay starting tomorrow. Reporting live here in Sarasota, Janelle Fort, back to you guys in the studio. All right, Janelle, thank you so much. Hopefully the power will be back on for those folks who have to leave. The Suncoast is approved for a disaster declaration, which means people can apply for federal disaster assistance. Sarasota and Manatee counties are included in the major disaster declaration. You can sign up for help at disasterassistance.gov. We've also put a link to it on our website, mysuncoast.com, along with more information on how to apply. Now, if you do apply, you will need to give them your address and private insurance information. It also helps to upload any pictures and documents that support your application. FEMA will send you application status updates by text or email. If you have any questions, you can call FEMA at 1-800-462-7585. They have someone waiting to answer your calls from 7 a.m. until 11 o'clock at night. In response to the hurricane, Volunteer Florida is gathering people to work at its shelters and other disaster relief organizations. To make a one-time $10 donation to Volunteer Florida, you can text the word DISASTER to 20222. A one-time donation will be added to your cell phone bill. You must be 18 years or older to donate. Well, if you're looking to hire contractors to make storm repairs, be aware that there are scam artists and unlicensed contractors out there. They could take advantage of you during this very stressful time. Now, here are some helpful tips to follow to avoid that fraud. Be cautious of contractors going door to door. Make sure to obtain estimates from at least three licensed contractors and ask those contractors for their license number and workers' compensation insurance. Make sure to verify their license with the state and also check any references. And always get a written estimate and contract. Communities here on the Sun Coast are working together to share a little help and a little love after the storm. Kevin Fry joins us now live from Bayside Community Church in East Bradenton, where volunteers have been hard at work all day long. Kevin? Hey there, Scott. Yeah, an army of volunteers all day. If you look behind me, you can see just a few of them that are still hard at work. They've been sorting through all sorts of donations and supplies, cherishable food or non-perishable food items, um, diapers, all sorts of other items. If you take a look over here, they're actually sorting through, trying to find certain diaper sizes. Now, the reason they're doing all this, if you want to follow me out this way a bit, uh, is because they're using this and giving these things out to people in this community that are really in desperate need right now. Uh, those who are particularly hit, many of them still don't have power things of that need and if you look out here they actually have formed somewhat of an assembly line so people roll up they tell them what they're looking for what they still need and then they go back inside try to find it gather it together in uh, shopping bags and pass it out to people now we're joined by Kristen Becknell she is here with the Bayside Community Church Kristen explain to us uh, you're gonna be continuing these uh, efforts tomorrow but you're also looking for some donations to help people so what can people bring if they're able to yeah absolutely so if people are able to donate um, we're receiving donations uh, all day tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. we're looking for things like water non-perishable food items. Uh, we're looking for baby supplies like diapers, uh, formula, um, baby food, uh, dog and cat food, things like that that will really help people who are in need. Maybe they still don't have power, they still don't have electricity. And so you can bring that by one of our relief points, which is one is right here at East Brainton campus. And so uh, for you as a community, as a church community, after this storm, you saw it coming, you were getting ready. What does it mean for you to be able to do this, to be able to help folks in need? Yeah, to be honest with you, this is really what it's all about. Um, so we we began preparing for this even before the storm hit so that as soon as the storm hit we could literally get out and rally volunteers and serve and meet needs and and so really it is an honor um, to be able to do this and it's been amazing to see just the unity of not just Bayside but uh, volunteers from all over the community uh, people from all over other states and uh, different things rallying together to serve the needs of people and uh, really just bring the love of Jesus to people that are in need to remind people that hey you're not alone uh, you don't need to be afraid. You have people that love you, that are here for you, and uh, that's exactly what we're trying to do. So. And if, if folks want to uh, volunteer, you don't have to be a member of the church, so you, you can don't. also do that. How do you, uh, your website would yes. be the best way to sign up for that? Yes, our website, www.mybayside.church, is the best way to go to get all of the relief information. Sign up to volunteer. We'll also have the donation list on there and all that sorts of stuff. Perfect. Thank yes. you so much. And Absolutely. it's also important to point out, beyond just these efforts here today, they also are doing some other 
other stuff beyond just here in the, the Sarasota region. They're also taking truckloads of supplies. You saw some of the pallets in there and sending them to some of the hardest hit areas, Hardy County, Arcadia, Fort Myers and beyond. And they're also sending out groups um, on little missions around the area to help clean up communities, to go sort through that debris, get it to the curbside and get it out of people's uh, yards and houses so they can get back to life. So this is a, it's a really a comprehensive effort on many different fronts and they again are looking for your help. MyBayside.Church uh, if you want to find out more. So that's where we are right here at Bayside Community Church. I'm Kevin Fry for ABC 7 News. Back to you guys. All right, Kevin, thank you so much. What a huge operation they have going there. Certainly, and it's been so heartwarming to see the outpouring of support from our community yeah. to those who are affected. Neighbor helping neighbor. Mm -hmm. Still to come in your Suncoast News tonight, what's being done to prevent similar tragedies after several people die in a Florida nursing home left without power and air conditioning. Plus, do you have a cute sleeping baby at home? What you need to be weary of when it comes to bedtime. Coming up in your Health Smart. My name is Stephen Jaffe. Uh, the law firm's name is Farmer Jaffe. One of the beautiful things about Julius is he's always smiling and it becomes infectious. The fact that Julius has a disability has absolutely nothing to do with the quality of work that he's done. Just a, a great person you want on your staff. Hi, this is Dan Marino. When your business recruits people with disabilities, everybody wins. To find out how, go to abilitieswork.com employflorida.com if you're only hungry for a slice of apple pie why buy the whole pie and you certainly wouldn't want to pay for an all-you-can-eat buffet so if you don't use your cell phone that much why get charged for a plan that's too big or even an unlimited plan luckily there's still a wireless company that shares your values welcome to consumer cellular our average customer pays about $25 a month for everything they need many pay even less as plans start at just $10 a month You'll get a straightforward bill that's easy to understand with no surprises and all the attention you deserve from our friendly customer service team. No wonder Consumer Cellular has received J.D. Power Awards for highest customer service. Plus, if you're an AARP member, you'll receive special discounts. It's easy to switch. You can even keep your phone and your number. So stop paying for more than you need and start your 30-day risk-free trial today. Call 800-457-2317 Go online or visit a Target store today. I'm tracking this very dangerous storm. If you've been ordered to evacuate, please go. We are double teaming it in the weather center. you got to make sure that there's no trees around that could fall on you in the safe room. Of course, we still are impacted. People are calling in with all kinds of questions and concerns. City of Venice is without water. The power has gone out there. I'm hoping you've got a battery-powered radio. I'm not sure if, if anyone's shift really ends. Um, seeing the community come together and help each other. You know, we are all in this together here. This is your brain. This is drugs. This is your brain on drugs. Any questions? Um, yeah, I have questions. Prescription drugs aren't as bad as street drugs, right? Weed's legal, isn't it? Drinking is worse than smoking weed. Isn't it? Why it is heroin, heroin so, so addictive? Molly just makes you feel happy. I have questions. Mom? Dad, did you ever try drugs? They're going to ask. Be ready. Go to drugfree.org. A message from Partnership for Drug-Free Kids. Three agencies have now launched investigations after eight South Florida nursing home patients died days after Hurricane Irma hit. Without power and without AC, it was days before anyone at the facility contacted 911, despite being located across the street from a hospital. Janice Fernandez reports. Stuck in the heat for days, more than 100 elderly residents evacuated from the rehabilitation center at Hollywood Hills. Eight confirmed dead and dozens of others in a critical state. The 911 calls coming in during the wee hours of the morning Wednesday, two patients in distress. A fire lieutenant on scene determining the facility was unsafe and then a gruesome discovery. Three individuals were found deceased on the second floor of the facility and 
uh, multiple other patients in varying degrees of medical distress. The patients wheeled into Memorial Regional Hospital, which is right across the street. Others in the shade as doctors and nurses tended to them. Officials say the facility did have power, but the AC unit wasn't working. Dave Long with Airstrong Air Conditioning tells us the fuse that is responsible for cooling the AC was popped out during the storm. He says he alerted FPL. I came here after the storm on Monday um, and we saw that fuse was out, but we called at that time. Now, now it's what, Wednesday? And this fuse is still out and I can't do anything. FPL saying, though, that the facility was not listed as a top tier critical medical infrastructure facility. And now we're learning that Hollywood Fire has been called 127 times to the rehab center of Hollywood Hills in the last 12 months. According to one official, that's excessive. I think it is an emerging scandal of gargantuan proportions with eight deaths already. Well, amidst the nursing home death, Senator Marco Rubio is calling for a federal review into the incident as well. In a tweet posted this morning, the Florida Republican said he is asking CMS Gov to review whether the Florida nursing home with eight tragic deaths was in violation of any federal regulations. All right, Bob Harrigan is with us again here and uh, here in, at, at home. I saw some showers around today, but uh, boy, we are in the middle of a very active hurricane season, aren't we, Bob? We are. This is uh, one of the active, most active hurricane seasons we've seen, especially in terms of energy in yeah. the atmosphere. And we saw that with, obviously, Irma and Harvey, too. I mean, but Irma, all the other storms before Irma, you could put in the energy category for that particular storm of uh, Irma. So... Harvey, Gert, Franklin, Emily, Don, Cindy, Brett, and Arlene. They were not all put together stronger than Irma. Irma's energy was much more than that. It's hard to believe. Uh, we have Jose. I didn't finish Kat Katia, but Katia was a storm already that was down in uh, the Gulf of Mexico, which moved into Mexico. So what's the next storm? Lee. Lee is the next one up. And then Maria. I'm pretty certain we'll see at least two more, but I would suggest probably anywhere from four to seven more storms before it's all said and done because we're just now a little past the peak of hurricane season. And it uh, looks like, again, Arlene was a kind of a weak storm, but nonetheless it uh, did cause a little bit of uh, headaches early on in the season. That developed outside of the hurricane season. They don't always develop uh, in between June 1st and November 30th. That's the uh, time frame for these storms. Out here, this would normally be kind of a concerning. A lot of storms gathering out in the Gulf of Mexico this time of year near the peak of hurricane season. Bears watching, but we have an upper level low spinning right here, which is not favorable for development. On top of that, we have a lot of shear going on in the atmosphere uh, located right over the top of that. But we have had some isolated showers developing here and there, some down near Fort Myers now. Not a lot going on in our neck of the woods, and it looks like the rain chance through this evening is at 20%. Uh, but this moisture availability around will give us a chance for a few showers and a few storms on Friday. And there's that upper level low. You can see it spinning just south of Louisiana right now. Satellite imagery showing quite a bit of clouds out there and some deep convection. And just the outflow. We're starting to see the outflow from Jose right there. You can see a little bit of it uh, on that frame and it's pushing off to the west. Currently, we have a few clouds. It's 87 degrees. Heat index at 101. And the dew point temperature at 79. It's warm. It's muggy out there. The pressure 2993. And that is uh, holding steady for the most part. The relative humidity at 77%. Tomorrow's forecast calls for highs to be in the upper 80s to near 90 degrees. We will see a heat index up near 100 with that uh, moisture content in the atmosphere, making it feel a bit warmer. A few showers, a few storms in the afternoon and evening. That rain chance is uh, anywhere from 40% near the coast, 50% inland. And as far as the tropics go, this is still getting sheared a little bit, but uh, you notice that it's not that well organized at this point. This is Jose. And Jose is now changing its direction just a little bit. It's been kind of back and forth in that cone of uncertainty. There's not a whole lot going on in the Caribbean. It's fairly quiet right there. But this is where we start to look for tropical development as we enter into October. So we start to move away from the Cape Verde storms out there in the Atlantic. And we start to focus more in the, oh, the Caribbean, which isn't always the best news for folks living along the Gulf Coast states. Uh, the winds on this now below hurricane strength at 70, but it's expected to regain some strength down the road to become a Category 1 again. It's moving to the west-northwest at 7, and there's the forecast path and track. Florida is not in danger, but notice that left edge of that cone of uncertainty up near the Carolina coast by Tuesday with winds up to 80 miles an hour. We'll see how that plays out down the road. And we're watching a disturbance. This one right here came off the coast of Africa. It's moving to the west. It's way out there in the Atlantic. We'll talk more about that a little bit later. Let's get to the forecast. 
and we'll show you what's happening for boaters tomorrow. Looks to be pretty good. East winds turn to the north at 10 knots, and seas will be right around 2 feet in a light shop out there. The water temperature warming up already. It was 83 after the storm, and now it's 88. So how quickly things change, right? Tides upcoming, 11.01. Low tide at 2.31. Sunset at 7.36. 20% chance for isolated showers this evening, 77 for your low. And then the extended forecast, it looks like this. A little less chance for showers and storms on Saturday. Looks to be a good weekend, and then we'll stay relatively dry through next week. Back to you. All right, thank you, Bob. The Food and Drug Administration will soon label foods that contain crushed peanuts that are appropriate for infants to eat. The announcement comes following the release of a study from the Immune Tolerance Network. That study found that introducing peanut products to kids between 4 and 10 months in age significantly reduces the chance that they will develop a peanut allergy. Hopefully it helps parents make that decision instead of being kind of lost of what to do. Because I feel like that's like they've gone back and forth over the years about whether to give or not give peanuts to the little ones. There's no word yet on when these labeled products will hit the market. Mm -hmm. And an important health warning for parents and about kids and snoring. It could be a sign of a more dangerous problem. ABC's Paula Ferris shares one family's eye-opening story. They're so cute when they're sleeping. And they're so funny when they snore, right? Uh, maybe not. Let's say my child snores. Should I be concerned? It should raise a flag, and you should think about watching some other signs and symptoms that sound the alarm. We just wanted to talk a little bit about how you're doing. Dr. Sydney Butts is an ear, nose, and throat doctor okay. who sees a lot of young snores and says all of that cute snoring could be a sign of something serious. Children can have sleep apnea? Definitely. It's not a problem restricted to adults, and it's actually one of the most common reasons why children need uh, their tonsils and or adenoids removed. Is that good, Katie? But it's not always that easy. When Amanda and Kevin Cook brought their newborn home, he seemed to be a healthy infant. But about three months in, baby Caden began to have episodes during which he'd stop breathing. Just completely in limp, non-responsive. I would hold him and say, Caden, 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 and finally, <gasps> And, you know, and he'd start breathing, and it just got worse and worse. At six months, a sleep study showed that little Caden had not one, but two kinds of breathing disorders. They found obstructive sleep apnea, which occurs when something is blocking the airway, such as tonsils, and central sleep apnea, which occurs when the brain does not give the body a signal to breathe. It isn't uncommon in newborns, but Caden was past that stage and not getting better. His tonsils were not enlarged, so even surgery wasn't the answer. Answer. Aside from snoring, other symptoms of sleep apnea in children include hyperactivity, trouble focusing in school, depression or anger, and even bedwetting. Symptoms that can sometimes be confused with ADHD, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, and can cause kids to be misdiagnosed. Many kids may get labeled as being hyperactive, and I think it's important to look at a variety of different causes that could be contributing to that. It may not be that sleep is the only cause, but if there's a worry about the child's sleep, it should definitely be investigated. Coming up, this 11-year-old just landed a job at the White House. We'll take a look at what he'll be doing. Plus, President Trump isn't just surveying the damage caused by hurricanes. He's also seeking an agreement on deferred action for childhood arrivals. The push for a deal coming up next. Is your mop a dirty, disgusting mess? You need the Hurricane 360 Spin Mop System, the only mop and bucket that spins the dirt away. A system that cleans practically anything and everything with super absorbent microfiber. Dip it in the washer side and the mess releases into the bucket. Then place it in the dryer side and push on the pedal. You get a clean mop head that's practically dry and ready for more. And your hands will never again touch a dirty, disgusting mop. The heads are washable and reusable. Get the Hurricane 360 Spin Mop System for just two payments of $19.99. You'll also get a Sticky Buddy, the reusable sticky roller that picks up pet hair and lint and washes clean in seconds. You can take advantage of our two-for-one pick-it-up special and get a second spin mop set. Just pay additional shipping and fee. And we'll upgrade you to free priority handling. So don't wait. Order now. Call 1-800-394-1524 to get your Hurricane Spin Mop double offer. So hurry and call 1-800-394-1524. Call now. A promise was made. A promise that hit the beaches of Normandy. A vow that captured Iwo Jima. 
a contract that weathered Tet, a pledge that stormed the desert in Iraq, an IOU that braved IEDs in Kandahar. A promise was made to America's veterans. DAV fights to keep that promise, so all veterans and their families get the benefits and support they earn. For help, visit DAV.org. I am the resident district manager on the FAU campus for Chartwell. Whenever I see Haley, I do not see a person with a disability. I see a person with extraordinary abilities. Haley is always smiling. She's always on time. She gives fantastic customer service and is always focused on any job that she's given. Hi, this is Dan Marino. When your business recruits people with disabilities, everybody wins. To find out how, go to abilitieswork.employflorida.com. I love taking care of my mom. It wasn't easy at first. She learned how to better communicate her needs. And you learned how to not ignore yours. I discovered how to make healthier meals. And I discovered how much I enjoyed them. Becoming a caregiver is a learning experience for everyone. Find articles, tips, and tools from experts and others who have been in your place. The Caregiving Resource Center at aarp.org slash caregiving. When my youngest Addie was two and a half, she was diagnosed with leukemia. When we first heard that diagnosis, you feel extremely alone. Walking in that light the night light with 6,000 people carrying lights, white for survivors, red for supporters, gold in memory of those who have passed. It's the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society's hope that every year there are fewer gold lanterns. Your lantern will make a difference. Start a team, join a team. Help us light the night. Welcome back now to the back and forth between President Trump and top Democrats after a bipartisan meeting at the White House. There are conflicting reports about what the group did or did not agree to regarding DACA and a border wall. ABC's Emily Rao reports from Washington. As he boarded Marine One this morning, President Trump weighing in on the bipartisan dinner he hosted Wednesday night. We're working on a uh, plan for DACA. People want to see that happen. The president sharing a dinner of Chinese food and chocolate pie with Senator Chuck Schumer and Congresswoman Nancy Pelosi. Shortly after, the two top Democrats said both sides agreed to protect the Dreamers in exchange for beefing up border security, but said that does not include money for Trump's border wall. We have reached an understanding on this issue. We have to work out details. And we can work together on a border security package with the White House get DACA on the floor quickly. And this morning, this from the president. The wall will come later, and the wall is going to be built. It'll be funded a little bit later. But hours later in Florida, President Trump sparking more confusion. We're not looking at citizenship. And moments after, Leader Pelosi saying her understanding is the president agreed to the DREAM Act. It's about everyone in our country having the opportunity to earn the, the path to citizenship, and that's what the bill does. It's an earned path to citizenship. This talk of the border wall and what appears to be easing up on immigration is not going over well with the far right. Some of them taking this bipartisan back and forth as a betrayal. Emily Rao, ABC News, Washington. A young boy who wrote to President Trump offering to cut the grass at the White House will get his wish granted on Friday. That's right. White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders announced that 11-year-old Frank Will will help mow the lawn at the Rose Garden. She read Frank's letter to the president at an August press briefing. Frank says he started his own business mowing his own neighbor's lawns in Falls Church, Virginia, and wrote that he admired the president's business success. He now offered to cut the grass and run a weed whacker at the White House for free. <laughs> Certainly an interesting story there. Hope you had some fun. Maybe the, the first order of business, though, is that he doesn't do it for free. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. Exactly, if he's going to follow. President Trump will probably tell him that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Still to come on your Suncoast News, for people left with very little food after Hurricane Irma, help is on the way. How a shipment arriving at the Venice Municipal Airport may be just the thing the community needs. If you're only hungry for a slice of apple pie, why buy the whole pie? And you certainly wouldn't want to pay for an all-you-can-eat buffet. So if you don't use your cell phone that much, why get charged for a plan that's too big or even an unlimited plan? Luckily, there's still a wireless company that shares your values. Welcome to Consumer Cellular. 
Our average customer pays about $25 a month for everything they need. Many pay even less as plans start at just $10 a month. You'll get a straightforward bill that's easy to understand with no surprises and all the attention you deserve from our friendly customer service team. No wonder Consumer Cellular has received JD Power Awards for highest customer service. Plus, if you're an AARP member, you'll receive special discounts. It's easy to switch. You can even keep your phone and your number. So stop paying for more than you need and start your 30-day risk-free trial today. Call 800-457-2317 Go online or visit a Target store today. We asked you, Suncoast, why do you like ABC7? I like ABC7 because it's local. It gives me all the local news. The local news, local weather. It's so local and so community driven. Haley Wilgus does a great job. John Scalzi, that's my guy. Bob Harrigan is wonderful. Stephanie's my favorite. I like Scott Dennis. I like them all. We're all very grateful that you cover what you do and you're here to participate with the community. ABC 7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you. I am a veteran. My victory was finding the strength to be a champion. My victory is having a job I can be proud of. At DAV, we help veterans get the benefits they've earned. My victory was finishing my education. My victory was getting help to put our lives back together. DAV provides veterans with a lifetime of support. My victory is being there for my family. Help us support more victories for veterans. Go to DAV.org. Who else has been taking your prescriptions? Keep your medicine and your family safe and secure. Mind your meds. To learn how we can help, visit the Partnership for Drug-Free Kids at drugfree.org. Ever since I can remember, I've been intrigued by industrial design and the optimization. Wait, that's passion? Ever since I can remember, my passion has been industrial design. We need 3D printers for Miss Adams' engineering program so that we are ready to solve 21st century challenges. Impressive. Think It Up is a new initiative to support student-powered, teacher-led learning projects. Students and teachers, how can you spark great learning experiences in your classroom today? Think It Up. A Venice Christian ministry is looking to give back to the local community. Normally, Agape flights take much-needed food and supplies to poor countries in the Caribbean, but this week they found a great need here at home. ABC 7's Christopher Brantley joins us with more. Christopher? A good afternoon. Ahead of Hurricane Irma, Agape Flights was forced to cancel their planned aid mission to the Caribbean and instead send their planes like this one to Tennessee, away from the storm. And while sheltering away, a church group in Louisville, Kentucky, anticipating a great need, decided to fill up Agape's plane with food, clean water kits, and all kinds of important supplies. As the storm ripped through parts of the south, it became clear there was going to be a big need down here. So a church in Fort Myers is going to be receiving about half of the donations. The biggest ticket item is the water purification system. We still have a lot of people displaced from their homes. Uh, no electricity, no uh, purified water. Uh, we will be able to produce you know, 65 gallons in a minute with these water purification out of standing water. So they won't need bottled water. We can sustain them with that. And the Venice Salvation Army will be taking the remaining supplies. They will be using those to help families here on the Sun Coast who have been displaced. Live in Venice, Christopher Brantley, ABC 7, your Sun Coast News. Thank you so much, Christopher. Oil tankers are streaming into Florida's ports as demand for gasoline spikes with evacuees returning home. But big concerns remain for the port of Key West where communications have been limited and a damage assessment is underway. Otherwise, Florida's ports have been fully reopened or opened with restrictions as channels continue to be cleared for debris by the U.S. Coast Guard. Those vessels have been coming in over the last day or so, and uh, those trucks are leaving the port with gas and working their best to get to as many gas stations uh, as possible and then turning around and going up and filling up again and headed back to the next gas station. So uh, working nonstop to make sure that we're, we're, we're getting gas out there. 
It is still too early to estimate the impact of the hurricane on the container ship and cruise industries, but the ports themselves, given days to secure cranes and lockdown warehouses, received mostly minor damage from requiring channel markers to be put back in place to needed repairs for a seawall at Port Tampa Bay. Tens of thousands still remain without electricity and air conditioning, and in Sarasota County, the number is now is more than 65,000 customers without power right now. In Manatee County, it's about 40,000 homes and businesses still in the dark. A Florida Power and Light spokesperson says crews are working around the clock to, around the state to get power back on, and while they are working on restoring that power to everyone, there is a priority for those with medical needs. And I'd like to take a moment to talk to you about how we set priorities for restoration. Um, facilities like hospitals are prioritized for restoration. Every year before hurricane season, we sit down with officials from all 35 counties that we serve. We work in partnership with them to determine the priorities in their community. People are advised in the meantime to be patient, which is not so easy when we're on, what, day five now? No power. I know so many people still dying in this heat. It is just too hot outside. Yep. Let's get the latest on that now with Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. Bob? You know, we talk about our area in particular. Christopher Brantley brought it up. Uh, these uh, Caribbean islands are in dire need of some help down there. I'm corresponding with a young lady whose brother lives in St. Thomas with five uh, children, and they said there's no electricity, no way off the island and they're just kind of huddled in their home that's been ripped apart as far as the roof goes. Every night, it's uh, just fend for yourself there on that small island in St. Thomas, and they can't get a hold of their insurance company. He can certainly, uh, I guess, uh, text uh, to his uh, sister here and give, him the, uh, give her the information, but it's, it's, it's uh, horrendous down there in the northern Leeward Islands right now and also in the U.S. and British Virgin Islands. Uh, for us, we're dealing with power outages, obviously trees down, picking those up now. Uh, clear skies here along the Sun Coast at this time, and currently we have mostly sunny skies. The heat index at 104, and that is not good. It actually has gone up 3 degrees just in the last half hour. Winds are out of the west-southwest at 9, the pressure 2993, that's rising slightly. We still have these flood advisories and flood warnings in effect, uh, none from Manatee County at this point, as the Manatee River near the Mayaka Head has since expired. However, Mayaka River near the Mayaka State Park still flooding there, still flooding going on and ongoing on the Peace River and all the way down to near Northport. Uh, the rain is out in the Gulf right now. There's some big storms to the north of us near Tampa and northern sections of Manatee County. Not much going on right here, uh, but we'll keep a chance for a few isolated showers hours to pop in later on this evening across the Sun Coast. More on our forecast as we head toward the weekend coming up in a few minutes. Back to you. All right, Bob, thank you. President Trump makes a stop in southwest Florida to survey the damage caused by Hurricane Irma. ABC's Molly Hunter reports. Security, okay? We're going down to Florida. We'll see you in Florida. President Trump and the First Lady Melania thanking first responders. The job that everybody has done is incredible. As he did after Harvey today in Florida, getting a briefing on the recovery and surveying the path of nature's destruction. I just want to thank everybody, the first responders. We've seen the devastation. Uh, we're going to see some more of it now, unfortunately. He flew from Fort Myers, Florida to Naples, right over us here in Bonita Springs. This view from the air. And First Lady Melania Trump tweeting this video flying low over flooded streets. She tweeted, there is much work to be done, but America is with you. The tour took the president through some of the hardest hit areas on the Gulf Coast. Scenes like this, crushed mobile homes, mangled piles of metal, the kind of destruction we've seen all over the state. He greeted residents in Naples and met with victims. Thank you, Mr. Been an honor to be here. Been an honor to be in front of you. So much of this city still out of power, but other parts of the Southwest even worse. Across the state, more than two million people still without power. But there's an army out here on the streets, hailing from 30 states and Canada, working around the clock to get this state up and running. We're very proud of, of the job that everybody around has done. Thank you all. Thank you very much. We'll see you later. Thank you. And it was a quick trip after just three hours here on the ground. President Trump is already wheels up, headed back for Washington. Molly Hunter, ABC News, Bonita Springs, Florida. Well, hold on one second. Folks who have been suffering all this week without electricity are beginning to feel the heat. And to cool things off, the Red Cross in Sarasota County are opening nine comfort stations across the area. They stretch from North Sarasota to Mayaka City to Longboat Key, Northport, Venice, and Inglewood. They are free and open to the public, and you may find the relief you so desperately need at this point. 
The conversation was set up so that people who don't have power or air can come here and stay for the day. Um, I had someone here yesterday who has a web company and she was able to work here and um, service her clients and have a little snack and at least just have some, um, you know, place to go and feel a little comfortable and not so stressed out. Many of the comfort centers will open again tomorrow should you once again wake up without power. To find out more about locations and hours, you can go to our website at mysuncoast.com. State transportation officials say they will not have to shut down a portion of Interstate 75 in North Florida because of flooding. The Santa Fe River is now receding. This is a recent video showing the river cresting. US 41 and US 27, though, remain closed due to the river's high water levels. And there was talk yesterday about having to close parts of I-75 just north of Gainesville. However, FDOT officials say that is no longer a concern. For those of you who still are having trouble commuting, Sarasota County Area Transit is back in full service today. The buses were temporarily closed because of Irma. You can find their route schedule on their website at scgov.net. The trash you collected during Hurricane Irma will finally be picked up. Sarasota County's garbage and recycling collection is back on schedule today. If you're in Manatee County, there will not be any recycling pickup this week. People typically scheduled for Tuesday and Friday collection will have their trash picked up tomorrow. And Monday and Thursday collection days will start next week. Large items, debris and yard waste will not be collected this week, although only things that fit in your garbage can will. Well, because of hurricanes, Irma and Harvey, our blood supply on the Sun Coast is at a critically low level. The blood bank is back open, but because the center has been unable to collect blood and platelets since September 8th, the supply is dangerously low. Luckily, Sarasota Memorial Hospital and the Sun Coast Blood Bank were, were able to open a temporary donation center at Michaels on East this afternoon. The, the two things most desperately needed, O negative blood and platelets. Platelets only last for five days and are in desperate need of replenishment. We were able to ramp up our supplies before Hurricane Irma. We only anticipated being closed for three days, but we were down for four. And that's when pe this is when the reality strikes, is that we have to collect enough blood every single day of the year to be able to meet the needs of the community. If you missed donating today, you can still do so at Michael's on East tomorrow from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Still to come in your Suncoast news, the British Virgin Islands continuing the cleanup process, how people there are trying to stay positive during a time of great stress. The following message is brought to you by Mesobook.com. People who have been diagnosed with mesothelioma have many questions. How did I get this disease? What are my treatment options? How will this affect my loved ones? You need answers, which is why we offer a free book written by medical professionals who have treated mesothelioma. Call toll-free at 1-800-777-1366 or go to mesobook.com. Glasses and contacts. You need them to see, but they put such a strain on your life, you miss precious moments. Due to new advances in vision improvement technology, LASIK is now affordable for almost everyone. With procedures starting as low as $299 per eye and over 1 million procedures performed by our trusted independent surgeons, LASIK surgery is a sensible, safe, and affordable solution to improve your vision. Our simple three-step process begins with a free evaluation, followed by an extensive preoperative exam to determine if you're a candidate for LASIK eye surgery. Depending on the results of your evaluation and eye exam, you and your surgeon will choose the LASIK option that works best for you. So call now to talk to a LASIK Vision Institute counselor and schedule your free evaluation. That's a $100 value, free. Call the LASIK Vision Institute for your free evaluation and enjoy more of your life. Call 1-800-813-0109, 1-800-813-0109. 40 Carats Family Center and the Community Foundation of Sarasota County present the 15th annual free speaker event, The Whole Brain Child, featuring world-renowned neuropsychiatrist and author, Dr. Dan Siegel, at Riverview High School Auditorium, Tuesday, October 3rd at 7 p.m. Learn strategies to nurture children's minds at all ages. Survive everyday parenting struggles and help your family thrive. RSVP required at 40carats.org. That's F-O-R-T-Y carats.org.
as Hurricane Irma tore through the Sun Coast, ABC 7 First Alert Weather was here for you. Tracking Hurricane Irma on the all new ABC 7 First Alert Weather app and sending push alert updates on the storm. Providing life saving tips and non stop coverage on air, online, and on all your digital devices. Plus, we answered thousands of your questions during our hurricane helpline. We kept you informed every step of the way. ABC 7 First Alert Weather. We're here for you when you need us most. Now your ABC 7 First Alert Weather Forecast with Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. Well, lots of sunshine out there today. Unfortunately, uh, very hot too. Heat index up near 104 right now across the area. And we aren't looking at many showers to cool us down this evening. There are a few out there. The rain chance at 20% for a passing shower or two later on this evening. Most of the rain offshore and to our north right now, following along a trough axis uh, left behind from Irma. Uh, there is a little bit of activity down to the south of us right now, but not much going on here. There are a few showers near Fort Myers and to the east there. There's one or two just over northern portions of Manatee County. Well, the uh, dry air continues to really hold on over the western Gulf of Mexico. You can see this spin and rotation right here. This is an upper level feature, a small one at that, but with that in place, we don't anticipate this to uh, grow into anything tropical like we saw with Emily, how it picked up and just developed into a tropical system in less than 24 hours. But I don't think that's going to be the case with this. Uh, but this is the peak of hurricane season. And I'll tell you what, things can happen very quickly this time of year. So we'll watch it nonetheless, but it doesn't appear that it has much of a chance. Although the satellite imagery is showing a large area of showers and storms out there, but they're being sheared apart. There's some strong southwesterly wind in the upper levels of the atmosphere. Currently at the airport, it's 88 degrees, but there it is. The heat index at 104. Winds out of the west, southwest at 9. The pressure 2993. And that has been holding steady. The forecast, the hourly forecast for tomorrow, calling for a nice day. We'll see a mixture of sun and clouds by midday. High temperatures will be in the upper 80s with a high humidity. It will make it feel a bit warmer. And a few scattered showers and storms in the afternoon. A little bit better chance, but still not a great chance. We'll see some storms around, but they won't be widespread. We could use uh, the clouds and not a lot of rainfall from that, but we'll see what, what plays out there. Well, here's a look now in the tropics. It's been a very active hurricane season, obviously, uh, with some uh, in extreme hurricanes this year. This one doesn't appear that it's going to be any more. It was at one point a major hurricane and looks like it will continue to make its way off to the northwest around the periphery of the Bermuda High which will then bend it off in between Bermuda and the United States. That's what it looks like right now. And it appears that it does not have a chance of impacting our weather too much. Now you can see the clouds are also kind of beat up a little bit. This is a tropical storm now, but soon to come, uh, bounce back into a hurricane. The cloud mass with it is just about as large as the cloud mass with the one out there in the Gulf of Mexico. But that one in the Gulf, as I said, is not developing. Well, tropical storm, Jose, 70 mile an hour winds, Expected to regain strength back to hurricane status, category one anyway, and then move up uh, toward the northwest and then eventually off toward the north and get close to the United States. But I think it's going to stay basically to the east of the U.S. Well, the tropical update continues to show some clouds and showers with a tropical wave moving through the eastern uh, portion of the Atlantic and into the central Atlantic now. Indications some late, late models are showing that something may pop up here down the road four or five days as it heads off to the west. I would not be surprised. Here we are again and near the peak of hurricane season. Well, 96 in Dallas now, 10 degrees cooler in Kansas City, 99 in Phoenix, much cooler in Minot. They were in the 90s just two days ago. So a little front has moved on through and 77 in Chicago. Nice day in Chicago, 72 Cleveland, a bit cooler there for boaters tomorrow. East winds turn to the north at 10 knots and a light chop out there in the bays and the water. Seas running less than two feet. UV index will be high tomorrow to 10. And we'll see the beaches warm up to 88. High tide upcoming at 11.01, a low tide at 2.31, and sunset will be at 7.36. Tonight, partly cloudy. A few isolated cells are possible, 77 for a low, and then warm. That's a little bit above average. The extended forecast does call for less of a chance on Saturday. There'll still be a few around. I hope they don't bother my golf game much. Uh, Sunday, 20% and 20% on Monday. And then high temperatures staying pretty close to seasonal averages. And lows, though, nice next week, uh, down in the low 70s, which is not bad. Back to you. All right, thank you, Bob. Time now to check your first alert traffic for the drive home. Right now on I-75, if you're heading northbound, be advised that drivers are seeing some backups near the Clark Road exit. The British Virgin Islands continues to feel the after effects of Hurricane Irma. Here are some of the latest scenes of the utter devastation there. 
38 people have been confirmed dead so far in the Caribbean. A British foreign secretary is visiting the area this week to survey the damage, but it will take time for the people living there to clean up, and the aftermath will take some time for many to get used to. But most have not lost their sense of humor and are rebuilding one brick at a time. It feels like we're in Armageddon. Just waiting for the zombies. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we've kept our sense of humor through this. We have nowhere to go but building up. Yeah. When you get to the bottom, you have nowhere to go but up. But it's one board, one stick, one log, one brick at a time. Yeah. Um, everybody's kind of lost all sense of what day it is. Since time, the sense of time has yeah. left. It's with sun up and sun down. UK has been called slow in its response to the catastrophic storm, but the British Foreign Secretary says UK commitment to that area is growing. The plan is not just for the short term, but for long term recovery. 185 mile an hour winds hit there. I, I mean, know. it's just uh, completely horrible. devastating. Yeah. Entertainment news is next. Stay with us. Attention, Royal Seas Cruises has just announced their deal of the day, a $99 Caribbean cruise for two people. This amazing cruise deal to the Bahamas is only available to the first 500 callers who register in your area today. So get ready to write down this number and act fast. We know that the best type of traveler is a repeat guest. So we're offering this $99 Caribbean cruise to prove it. That's $99 per couple, including your stateroom, all your delicious meals, full spa, live entertainment, three kids clubs and more. Come see why we were voted one of the top 10 best overall cruises by Cruise Critic. We're so sure you'll enjoy yourself and become a repeat customer that you're getting this deal of the day for the unbelievable low price of just $99 per couple. But you've got to act fast. Pick up the phone and be one of the first 500 callers to take the Caribbean cruise of a lifetime for just $99 per couple. Call right now or log on to RoyalCruiseNow.com. Call 800-906-0489. We answered the call of duty and left our homes to serve in far off lands. Now we answer another call, this time at home, in our own communities, to respond in times of chaos, to use our strength, our skills, and our experiences to bring hope amid devastation and destruction. Together, as a team of brothers and sisters, we're continuing our mission to make this country a little stronger and a little better each day. We are Team Rubicon. My name is Julius. I have cerebral palsy. I work for Farmer Jaffe Weising Law Firm. I do a lot of data entry and scanning documents. I want to increase my working experience to make the company much better. At the end of the day, it's good to think of the day's work and to think about what I have accomplished. Hi, this is Dan Marino. When your business recruits people with disabilities, everybody wins. To find out how, go to abilitieswork.employflorida.com. It's not just a donation. It's a warm blanket. It's a bottle of clean water. It's a roof and a bed. It's knowing someone cares. It's feeling safe. You said today that's better than yesterday. Every dollar you can spare helps so much more than you can imagine. Please donate now. Your help is urgently needed. Because my parents told me I have to be responsible. Because my first coach told me, you can do this. Because my boss showed me how to do a good job. Because my teacher helped me see the choices. I'm swimming faster than I ever dreamed. I am a valuable employee. I discovered that I could work as an artist. I will be whatever I want to be. Youth with disabilities should grow up expecting to work and succeed. For more information, visit whatcanyoudocampaign.org. Singer Selena Gomez is sharing the news that she had a kidney transplant over the summer. The 25-year-old posting a photo on Instagram of her and her best friend in the hospital together. Gomez said her friend gave her the ultimate gift and sacrifice by donating her kidney. The singer says her lupus is behind her failing kidneys, which is why she hasn't been out more promoting her new album. And congratulations are in order for Mandy Moore. The singer and This Is Us actress is engaged. Two of Moore's This Is Us co-stars confirmed that news. Moore's fiance is a musician who's a front man on the Indian 
indie rock band Dawes. The 33-year-old Moore was previously married to singer Ryan Adams for six years. A piece of history has been uncovered in Norway. A Norwegian archaeologist says a well-preserved, if rusty, iron sword dating to the Viking era has been found in southern Norway. The nearly three-foot-long sword was found between rocks with the blade sticking out and may have been left by a person who got lost in a blizzard and died on the mountain from exposure. The sword's preservation is likely due to the quality of the iron as well as the cold, dry conditions. It was found in late August by two men who were just on a reindeer hunt. Well, Willie Nelson is the latest celebrity raising money for hurricane relief. The Harvey Can't Mess With Texas, a benefit concert for Hurricane Harvey relief, is scheduled for September 22nd in Austin. Nelson, a Texas native, has roped in such stars as Bonnie Raitt, Paul Simon, and James Taylor to join him in the four-hour concert, part of which will air on Texas TV stations and live stream on YouTube. I love seeing all the celebrities getting together and giving back to the hurricane relief efforts. The program the other night was, was fantastic. Of course yeah. it was. Well, we'll be right back with more news. Stay with us.